This is Metal Gear on the MSX, a game from 1987, directed by Hideo Kojima, that marked the beginning of the famous Metal Gear franchise. While it may not be as well known to some Metal Gear fans these days, there are still several options for playing it on PC. In this video, we'll be comparing five different ways to play Metal Gear on PC to find the best option. So let's get started. First, we'll examine the PC version sold at GOG.com. This version of Metal Gear plays smoothly, with no performance issues or bugs. It's limited to 15 FPS, but has integer scaling, controller support, and displays in the correct aspect ratio. The only downside is that if you're using a controller, you'll still need to use a mouse and keyboard to save. Anyway, here are the settings I've used for this video. Next, we'll look at the PS2 version of MGS3 Subsistence, emulated on PCSX2, the PS2 emulator. This version of MGS3 includes a fully playable version of Metal Gear 1 as an extra. While it's also capped at 15 FPS, it lacks integer scaling and displays in the incorrect aspect ratio. Even when using the integer scaling option on PCSX2, Metal Gear 1 is still displayed incorrectly. Also, the font is more pixelated and the image is slightly darker than other versions. However, it's still a perfectly playable option and allows you to save using a controller. I've had no performance issues whatsoever with this option on my PC. For reference, my PC is an i5-9600K and an RTX 2060 Super. And here are the settings I used. Now, let's take a look at the PS3 version of MGS3 from the HD collection running on RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. Like the PS2 version of MGS3 Subsistence, this version also includes Metal Gear 1 as an extra. It's also capped at 15 FPS and has integer scaling by default when playing in full screen on a 720p display. The integer scaling will also work at 1440p if you increase the resolution by 200% and at 4K if you increase it by 300%. The text is slightly blurrier and the image is a bit darker, but it does allow you to save using a controller, like the PS2 version. And like the previous option, no problems running the game on this emulator on my PC. Anyway, here are the settings I've used for this video. Next, we'll take a look at the Xbox 360 version of MGS3 running on Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator. Like the PS3 version, it's from the HD collection and includes Metal Gear 1. It runs at 15 FPS like the other options and has integer scaling by default, like the PS3 version. There is some audio delay and input lag, which is common on Xenia, but the image quality is similar to the PS3 version, though slightly darker. I've also had no trouble running this option on my PC. The settings I've used were all on default, except for the draw resolution scale, which was set to 3 on both axes. Finally, we'll examine the original MSX version of Metal Gear running on OpenMSX, an MSX emulator. This version is the most authentic way to play Metal Gear, as it's the original version released in 1987. Interestingly, I found that it runs at 60 FPS. The characters update at 30 FPS, and other things such as weapon shots update at 15 FPS, but it's still a significant improvement over the other options. It has integer scaling, but not in full screen, and also offers a CRT scan line filter. 
the image quality is comparable to the other versions, but there are several in-game differences, such as the text has a different font and is poorly translated from Japanese. Some guard patrol routes are different. Some item icons are different. The Kodak doesn't feature a list of contacts. You need to remember their frequencies. You can pick up items even if you are full of them. It just won't increase their count. Rations don't get used automatically if your health reaches zero. The lasers switch very quickly. Remote missiles don't work against the flamethrower boss. It doesn't feature completion ranks, boss survival mode, or special items like the other versions. And the most important difference I've noticed, the bosses don't have any damage indicators, which makes the fight against the final boss very frustrating. These are some of the gameplay differences I've noticed. There might be more. Aside from that, binding keys for the controller is very complicated, so I opted to play on keyboard. Also, saving in-game requires a real MSX BIOS, so if you don't have one, it's best to use save states instead. Clearly, this option provides a very different experience to the other options, and it's a great way to play the game in its original form. Overall, all five options have their pros and cons, but the original MSX version running on OpenMSX is the most authentic way to play Metal Gear. It has the best frame rate, but the poorly translated text and the lack of damage indicators can make it a less enjoyable experience compared to the other options. The PC version sold on GOG.com is a good option if you want to play with minimal issues, but it's limited to 15 FPS and requires a mouse and keyboard to save you if you're using a controller. The PS2, PS3 and Xbox 360 versions all offer similar experiences with the Xbox 360 version having slightly more input lag and audio delay. I would recommend the MSX version if you want the most authentic experience. Or the PC version if you want the most convenient option. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful in comparing these different ways to play Metal Gear on PC. I recommend trying this game out if you want to see what Kojima's first directed game looks like. It's a short and fun 2D stealth game that has a lot of similarities with later games in the franchise. And if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.